beautiful. Welcome all of you back to the organization of the school from anywhere. Welcome all of the uh, visitors to celebrate the number of celebrating the Eucharist here with us this evening. Uh, in order to share that warm welcome, I would like to invite all of you to church in front of you and the people on the back, on the back or the, the right. Good afternoon.
that that spray. <coughs> o God, who calls the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fit on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods of your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes it, but rather nourishes it and cherishes it even as Christ does a church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The Word of the Lord.
We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. had just died that day. She was with her mother, comforting her because she never expected to see any of her children die before she died. Her mother had taken really good care of her children. This was a tremendous loss that only one who experiences this can truly understand. While reading the Gospel, these, her, these words struck me. Many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. They walked away because they could not accept his words. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. Losing these disciples must have felt like a death of a loved one because Jesus loved his disciples with all his heart. He had fed and nourished them as a mother feeds and nourishes her children. Seeing them walk away must have been very painful. So Jesus looked at the twelve apostles his closest friends and asked them if they wanted to leave too. Simon Peter said, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. These words showed a profound faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. Faith is a gift from God. In the Gospel, Jesus tells his apostles, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by my Father. The apostles could have chosen to walk away, but they chose to stay because they loved Jesus. They had faith and hope in his teachings. Our faith is a gift. God chose to give us this gift and it's our choice to believe in God's Word. I work as a physical therapist, and this week, one of my Catholic clients asked me, what do you think about abuse in Pennsylvania? I quickly said, read Matthew 18, verse 6, and see what Jesus says. Whoever causes one of these little ones to believe me sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. A priest friend of mine calls this the millstone of war. My client responded, John, don't you think that's harsh? Well, over the past week, I thought about it. And yes, it was harsh. Jesus was using hyperbole and exaggeration to impress upon us how atrocious it is to harm a child. Jesus always protected children and said, we must become like little children to enter heaven. As members of the body of Christ, we have the obligation to protect the most vulnerable. Eric Harrison, a famous child psychologist, once said, the most deadly of possible sins is the mutilation of a child's spirit. It saddens me that some of my friends and family members have left the Catholic Church because of the abuse. It also saddens me that good priests and religious men and women are treated with disdain and their good works are ignored because of the abuse of others. But I am thankful that so many Catholics have stayed faithful to our church. All of us here today, like the apostles, Jesus' closest friends, 
have chosen to stay. We all choose to stay for our own reasons. I choose to stay Catholic because I believe in the true presence of Jesus, the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, our sacrament of love. I stay because I am part of the body of Christ, united with each one of you in the Trinitarian family of love. I stay because I am in communion with you and all the saints with Jesus when I receive the Eucharist. I stay because I receive grace in the sacraments, so the gifts I received in baptism, the gifts of faith, hope, and love are strengthened. I stay because I believe in the one holy Catholic apostolic church that Jesus gave us through his apostles, so that the spirit of Jesus will always be alive within us. So I choose to stay. Just as I choose to always stay with my wife, united in the sacrament of matrimony, in good times and in bad times, in sickness and in health, to honor and love her all the days of my life. As St. Paul said in the second reading, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. Love demands Humility, patience, kindness, respect, compassion, and forgiveness. The sacrament of matrimony is a promise, like the covenant God made with his chosen people in the Old Testament, to always be faithful to God. The sacrament of matrimony is a covenant to be faithful. In the first reading today, Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Marriage is a sacrament of service emanating from love. Through love, we are all propelled to serve our spouses, our friends, our church, and our community. In conclusion, our pastor, Father Joe, asks all of us from this evening, from this weekend onward to kneel in reverence from the conclusion of the Lamb of God until communion is finished, getting in rows to receive the Eucharist. So as we kneel during communion, let us pray for the most vulnerable. Let us forgive those who have hurt us. Let us beg forgiveness for those who we have hurt. And let us pray for the grace to always remain faithful to our church with a profound gratitude for our faith, hope, and love.
Let us all to in our prayers for the church, the world, and our community. The church leaders may be gifted with strong faith and wisdom to guide the flock entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord, Lord that those who govern may reject the values of society that contradict the gospel and choose to serve the Lord of life. We pray to the Lord, Lord that we who have come to know and believe in Jesus as God's Holy One may serve one another out of reverence for Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord that husbands and wives may grow in love and be living signs of Christ's love for church. We pray to the Lord, Lord that those who have turned away from the teaching of Jesus may rediscover his love and the power of his word in their lives. We pray to the Lord, Lord that those who are ill may find strength and healing in the Lord, especially Ron Chu, Antonio Crispino, Paul Fuentes, Christopher Cantola, Father Richard Kennedy, Luke Madsen, Donna Nikai, Virginia Rhodes, Bob Stoddard, Carrie Sink, Neil Sarsky, and those remembered in our parish bulletin. We pray to the Lord, Lord that those who have died may dwell in the glory of God's kingdom, especially Stephen Clay Buharma. Dimitri Bernardo, Gail Bradley, Randy Clyde, Matt Carriage, Barclay Nur, Torres Greb, Jim Reed. We pray to the Lord, Lord for all the intentions in our prayer book of petitions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, we are prayer. Heavenly Father, please accept all our prayers offered to you in love and confidence. Please continue to send the Holy Spirit to come upon us, the spirit of courage, so that all of us may stay in order to receive the bread of life, which the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for our life, but also for the life of the world, but through our the example of our Catholic life, the whole world may be saved. We ask all this through Christ, our Lord. Amen.
O Lord, to gain for yourself a people by corruption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his work he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we obey. In a similar way, when supper was handed, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take care of all of you and dream strong for years, years. The color of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
in our name, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, some announcements. <clears throat> we need you to help in faith formation. Our classes will be starting up in the next few weeks, and we still need volunteers in all our programs, especially working with our junior high and high school age students. We are also starting up a new Liturgy of the Word for Children program at our 1030 Mass, and need some volunteers to assist our children during Mass. Please consider a weekly or monthly commitment. Contact the Faith Formation Office at the phone number on the back of the bulletin for more information. This is Recycle Weekend. Remember to take your recyclables to the bin in the parking lot. See the bulletin for times of operation. Please pick up a bulletin at the doors of the church for all upcoming parish events. You can also access the bulletin on our webpage at www.stbonaventure.org. All of you got a class tonight for implementing the new culture and meeting now. Sign it up for receiving more communion and come back with your pews and everything. Thank you so much. And the whole diocese in unity together to worship the Lord and let the whole world that Jesus is really present everywhere we celebrate the Eucharist and in the Blessed Sacrament. So the best witness to the whole world say that yes, we believe in the words of Jesus, the words of eternal life. We together with Father Joe, Father Tim, Father the Bishop, Father John, all the leaders in the whole country staff, we wish you a wonderful weekend and a beautiful week. School is out. Enjoy the weather. The Lord be with you. The mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. As we go forth, please join in singing number 573 to Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, number 573. 